Okay, let's start. We, d we don't have a lot of time, only 20 minutes, so let's start on time. Uh, um, my session is Drupal, a tool for JavaScript developers. Um, my name is Wolfgang Ziegler, also you might know me as Fargo, uh, it's like my Drupal work handle. I'm like a managing partner and, and CTO at Tronomics, like we are a Vienna-based company. And we also like focusing on doing decoupled Drupal uh, with a stack, also like code loop with decoupled Drupal. And um, some of my contributions, you know, you might know me from like in, in the past, like uh, I worked quite a bit on Drupal core, like doing all Drupal 8 core development. So I spearheaded the Drupal 8 entity API and I'm subsystem maintainer of the type data API in core. Uh, I'm also like involved like with some content modules also around our stack like Lupus custom elements renderer and custom elements module uh, but also did like a lot of uh, popular Drupal 7 module like rules module, entity API, contrib, build collection, profile 2 and, and that kind of modules. Uh, you also find me under the Rilfaga on Twitter. But let's talk more about JavaScript. So the reason I I would like to talk about it is because JavaScript frontends are just really popular. Like nowadays, like when you uh, check like about web frameworks uh, popularity, like this is a survey like um, 2021 from, from Stack Overflow. I mean, it really mixes backend and frontend frameworks, but still like at the top, it's pretty clear, like also React and there's like Angular, Vue.js, also like pretty high on top, so like modern, uh, JavaScript frameworks are really popular and I would say they are, they are here to stay. Actually, there's also Drupal on the slide, just uh, it made it already like on, on the last place, but it's still there. <laughs> um, but I think with that, like when you start like with web development today, it's like really a new generation of web developers. So it's not so uh, likely that they are actually starting with Drupal today. It's they will probably, if you go to university, you have courses more like a, when you try React or Vue.js and, and some similar framework. So how does Drupal fit in that kind of landscape and how do those new web developers relate to Drupal? So I wonder, could those, um, for those JavaScript front-end developers just be like Drupal be a tool that they're using so that they become like Drupal site builders. So Drupal becomes one of the, the tools in the toolbox. And like actually trees, uh, like um, during the past uh, trees notes and also like I think it was in May this year, he blogged about that Drupal, he wants to make it actually for ambitious site builders and like uh, make that also the, the frame like for the development for, for Drupal 11. And Given that, like, um, I checked that, like, is that a fit? So, like, what is an amb ambitious site builder? So, he actually des describes an ambitious site builder as someone who sits between the developer, probably backend developer, and, and content offer. And um, he also describes it as someone who gets a lot of things done just by the UI, by installing and configuring modules uh, and doing some configuration. But then also he says, yeah, and when needed, then you use some custom code to just make your site beha behave exactly the, the way you want it to be. And this is, I guess, the very first part because like when someone just starts development and starts with JavaScript, then you are not proficient in PHP. And there's probably a high barrier to, to get to, to, to Drupal PHP development when you're just into that. Uh, but then at the same time, like those small customizations, I think they mostly happen close to the, to the user, like in the, in the UI, to the user interaction. And in a decoupled side, that mostly means it's actually in the front end. Uh, so then it fits again, because then like, this is like where the front end developer has his focus on the, his, his work anyway. And then it, uh, the typical needs could be just like zero code configurable via the Drupal user interface. So I think that way in, uh, it would work very well uh, for a front-end developer uh, to just be like an ambitious site builder to Drupal and focus on development on in the front-end. So what would like um, a JavaScript developer who hypothetically then would work like that with Drupal need? So my thinking is like, first off, 
Drupal they would use Drupal as a headless CMS. That would be the, the, the role of Drupal, the content provider. Uh, so they, they needed like configurable data module model. So I think we are pretty good with that with all the field UI. Of course, it's not necessarily that much focused on, on like the data modeling part. I, I think it's still pretty straightforward for, for that use case and we're also pretty good with that. And also uh, they really would need and expect uh, a great editing experience from a headless CMS. Uh, so like we, al we also have like some, some solid editing experience like built in also like with renewed admin theme, Claro theme, I think uh, Drupal is good on track there. Uh, then, like it's most important, I think, uh, when I, like a developer evaluates things, also that they can get to some quick results, so they can they actually see they can get the job done quickly. Uh, so for that, probably, yeah, I think it becomes more and more popular to just then go with some some hosted service because that's the quickest way to to get started with something. So maybe some some managed service uh, or cloud hosting. Uh, and then of course also like the, the developer experience like is, is then critical. How are the APIs, how quick and easy is it to, to work with then, then with that system. I wanna have a, a, a little bit closer look at those points. And so I checked like what are the, the popular CMS options that like uh, typically uh, front-end developers would use when they are looking for headless CMS. So I was trying to also like go in a little bit and like kind of do the research from the perspective of a front-end developer. And that's like what I've come up with. So basically there are like those two main categories. They are like the, the managed service, the software as a service and like the, the open source camp. The uh, managed services, like there are a couple of big names like Contentful, Prismic, Storyblocks, Sanity, and so on. So there are uh, um, quite some providers there. And then on the open source side of things, there's actually a few who are actually both. The, like Directus and, and, and Tyna, uh, they are both like an open source system, but they also are offered like as a managed service, as a SaaS product, uh, where you can just launch it, and launch it and get started very quickly. And then there's Strapi. Uh, Strapi, I think, is a, a really interesting case uh, because like also like what they are saying, if you go on the website, uh, Strapi is the leading open source headless CMS. It's 100% JavaScript, fully customizable, and developer first. And that's pretty interesting. So it's, uh, it, it, they, they say they are the leading ones. And actually, if you like check out so some common metrics like GitHub stars and like find this, you find a lot of references about Strapi. And it's interesting because you don't find a lot of references about Drupal. So when you compare it, it's like Strapi um, has like that features, like according to the website, it's open source, it's RESTful or, or GraphQL, so it offers both APIs. It's really customizable and flexible and it's self-hosted. Yeah, it sounds a lot like, like Drupal to me, actually. So it's not that um, different. Well, it, it's JavaScript-based, so I guess that's also like a, a big main reason for the developers to, to get started like with a JavaScript-based backend. But then there's also like the big headline, build apps fast. So how about doing headless Drupal fast? So as mentioned, for quick results, like the managed service provider is something that you need. I mean, there are like um, a couple of Drupal hosting providers who just provide that. Uh, so I think that's also there. I mean, there's like, I don't know, Pantheon, Platformers Edge. I think also Acquia has an offering like that where you can just very easily and quickly spin up a machine and get started. And there's also like quick test drive options like this, the Drupal pod uh, project, which you can use to very easily spin up like Drupal development environment and Git pod and also simply test me for, for trying things out. So there are ways to get quickly started. Um, when looking at the pleasant front end uh, developer experience, again, we, we have like many options. Like there's a uh, JSON API in Drupal core and you can like extend it with the JSON API extras to, to customize it more. Then there's also GraphQL module where it's actually there was version three, which was uh, quite popular in that it just exposed like Drupal internal data structures directly. Now there's like a version four, which is more customizable, customizable, but you need to set up your own uh, GraphQL schemes, sh uh, schemas. And there's also like a more uh, recent uh, GraphQL Compose module, which again tries to make 
it easier. And like the last one, the Lupus Custom Elements Renderer uh, module is uh, like the, um, the one module we are also maintaining um, and got started like uh, as part of Tomnomics, which is just basically an, an module which provides an API uh, for every page response in like a component-oriented uh, API. Um, so there are a couple of options, but then that's not necessarily quick. How do you get started? What are you doing? I mean, every option you need to configure something uh, for, for making it work very nicely. So I think there's everything there, but it's not necessarily the, the quickest thing because you need to s set up things. And then there's also the possible hurdle of how are you handling con configuration? I mean, it's it's like common best practice in Drupal to do con uh, configuration stages, but then I don't know in that use case context, is it even wanted? I mean, it can be easily skipped, so that's so maybe it's not really a problem. Um, but then it could also be an advantage. I mean, it could be some really decent offering also like to say, okay, you, you do it in like in a staging environment, test everything, and you can nicely then push things out on production and you don't have like, I don't know, like on a managed service, you probably would have them to actually try data model, data model changes on production, but yeah, seems, seems a bit scary. So it's, it's a good feature, but then how would a JavaScript developer use it? I mean, when they don't have a, a local Drupal development environment, there's no place to easily run trash to do a configuration export, things like that. So, yeah, there, there needs to be some tooling around it. So some hosting providers ha have toolings like that, wha which make it easier to like to do the configuration staging workflows. But then there's also uh, some interesting modules to automatically create pull requests from uh, the Drupal UI. Um, so, like, so like basically you do your changes in the Drupal new environment and when you're done, uh, you could like automatically have a pull request uh, created uh, against the repository and then it goes all by the regular deployment workflows via, via code. So that I think would be also like a, a pretty nice option to, to explore for that use case. But then it doesn't solve, how do you get started? So I, I think this is like really the, the main issue to solve. How do you get started quickly and, um, and, and which option to choose? So yeah, there are plenty of options. There are also plenty of options about hosting, which is good, but then again, when getting started, it makes things difficult, which one should I choose? Then there are the options about APIs, and then how do you set up the APIs? How do you solve authentication in a couple of contexts? There are many options on, on, like on how to tackle all that kind of problems. Uh, so I figured, yeah, well, we have guides, probably it's documented, so uh, I checked out like the documentation for that and there's a, a guide on decoupled Drupal, which, which sounds really great at the first place, but then when you look at it, it's rather disappointing. It was like really well intended, but it just never got really finished, so it's really a, a work in progress, and when you look at it, it leaves you with more open questions than answers, so I guess when you find it, it's not really helpful. Uh, it, it was even then I noted, like when you look it up, it even was talking only about bosses and docs for like um, decoupled Drupal menus, because I guess the documentation was created during the uh, decoupled Drupal menu initiative. Uh, so I actually figured uh, I had the permission to fix that, so I got this one quickly fixed. But still, the all of the documentation pages, basically if you click on an item, it needs work. So probably we as a community should should work to, to get some more documentation on like a better overview. But I think it has the main, it's like, it suffers from the same problem. There are just varying approaches. So how to decide which one to document. Um, so how, how could we solve that? And like, I think the idea and like would be here to, to promote more like different uh, kind of decoupled triple stacks. So to basically also to have like, uh, when you start, you would decide on what's the, the stack you're interested in and then you have documentation for, for that stack and also like setups that work easily for that stack. So I think that's like a way um, we could solve that. We, and we actually, we, we got quite some decoupled Drupal stacks. So for example, there's the, the next Drupal project, uh, which I think is, is doing, yeah? Five minutes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thanks. 
um, which is, I think, doing a, a really good job in, in like solving uh, the, the marketing issue and like clearly communicating uh, what it can do. So it has like a really nice website and it then also has a guide to get you started. So I think uh, that one is, is doing a pretty good job here already. Um, then there's also like um, a Gatsby module. So if you're using uh, the, the Gatsby frontend framework, that also seems to be uh, quite straightforward. I must say I haven't tried it, uh, but it, uh, it looks really uh, pretty decent as well. Then there's like the Lupus Decoupled Drupal, which is the stack which we are currently working on uh, and, and getting started with really, uh, to make also Decoupled Drupal easier and uh, component oriented with a Nux.js framework. And then there's Drux.js, which is also like um, a solution with Nux.js, which is more working like, I would say it's like tries to give you an experience which is more similar to the, to the Drupal theming layer. It's also like a pretty interesting project and has like a uh, really good documentation website as well. Uh, so like there's plenty of options and there are even like more which I forgot to list, like there's Contenta CMS, like uh, which is also good like with getting started with JSON API. So there's really a lot of things already there. <coughs> so how could we make this easier really? So I, I think this actually goes really well with the current initiatives that we have like running, like distribution recipes, I think is like really perfect for that. So it solves exactly that problem, like combining a couple of modules, adding that configuration that you need, so setting everything up so that you can get started quickly. So I think uh, that's already like something huge which can help with that. And then like when this becomes also like integrated with project browser, it, it could be uh, already really great uh, so that you like, like when downloading Drupal, you could actually just um, like choose the stacks, uh, um, like one of the available available stacks in there, and <coughs> get started with that. And and once we have that, I think we, I mean, we could make this an an install time decision. So when you start a new Drupal project, and when you install it, so that directly in the UI, when we have project browser and distribution distribution recipes, I think it would be really great then to present the user like. Okay, and what do you want to do with, with the front with the front end? Decide: Do you want to go uh, with a traditional front end, or do you want to like uh, use Next.js or Nux.js? Present present the user the supported options, uh, so that then uh, he can get started very quickly. I th I think that would be really great uh, uh, way to solve it. And actually, it turns out that uh, Laravel is is doing pretty much that. So, like, if you go to to Laravel.com. Uh, they have it directly on there that's basically they are uh, supporting the monolith or APIs and they have starter kits for, for varying uh, ways of, of doing the front end. Uh, so it's pretty much that and I think it's like really also the, the way to go for Drupal. Um, yeah, that's, that's my presentation uh, and uh, would be really interested in like your thoughts uh, or questions of course. Yeah. Feedback. Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. M more of a, a, a comment, but thank you for calling out the decoupled menus documentation uh, related stuff. And I, I agree, it needs <laughs> a lot of improvement. Uh, and for anybody who's going to be at the contrib day tomorrow, uh, hoping to get some people together to work on that, uh, we're not going to completely solve it, but maybe we could make it l a little less embarrassing. <laughs> I have a question about, um, for me, uh, from my perspective, it uh, stays and falls with the API because I, I'm coming from when I'm programming React or something, you have just the API solving the JSON and then take all the data and make some front end with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I heard a couple of um, presentations and I think when you concentrate on what people want to do when they are coming as a user on the site. So for example, just seeing the data, search some, some stuff or so. And what Drupal can solve is a good AP API, packing all the data inside, have something prepared for you to get your components outside or have something to connect the search uh, server or API to get some stuff. So it's mostly that all the backend ends in just a few endpoints 
that people can take and then use what they want. And is it too, too less from your perspective or is this something you said, yeah, but we need more a middle way between coupled and uncoupled because Drupal has so much stuff that we want to get to the user of, of front-end development or what's your perspective on this? So raw API or get Drupal into the front-end in your framework, JavaScript framework? I, I don't think I understand the alternative. What's the alternative to raw, to raw API? <laughs> so first perspective, just get the API. Drupal makes yeah. all the backend, just uh -huh. API. Or, for example, ah, when you have bundles and fields, ah, there's a button, get me some components out of it. And we make this for React because React is a good framework mm -hmm. that brings uh, the, the advantage that you just get some front and outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that the disadvantage is when something someone will s with v or what else, mm -hmm. he said, nah, but only mm -hmm. one framework. So what's your perspective to, uh, to on this? Um, so I think that like the way front end developers would like to use it is more like to stay in control and so rather have like more the, the plain API. But then I like, and that's also like actually what our decoupled Drupal stack, like Lupus decoupled Drupal is about, is then also to keep editors in control because that's also like what's interesting when you have in CMS, like maybe you wanna have like page builder, layout builder working and that kind of things. So I think that's the kind of integrations that are also like really important that and that would make it as a platform really interesting. So I think it's op in either way, we would have both. So we would have the, the plain APIs, but also then like uh, more component oriented way of doing it. And for that, some re uh, ready-made components, like, like have some libraries that just work very well and easily, I, I think would be great, yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah, I guess the combinations. <laughs> Sorry, we don't have more time <laughs> for our questions. We need to switch to the okay, next Okay, thank you everyone. So if you have the code sprints, I'd like more, I'm happy to join the talk. <laughs>